The first two modules in this chapter introduce the EECS protocol and walk through the signaling messages sent during a typical call setup. Now we'll look at how to configure EECS in Asterisk. We'll start by covering the basics of EECS.conf and finish up by discussing how to set up a few of EECS's more advanced features, like native transferring and trunking. EECS connections are set up and managed in a file called EECS.conf. This file obeys the same basic syntax and style rules as other Asterisk configuration files, and in fact, looks very similar to SIP.conf. Some of the option names are different because the protocols are different, but if you're comfortable working with SIP.conf, configuring EECS.conf will feel natural. At the top of the file, there's a general section where several global options can be set. Among these are bind port and bind address. By convention, EECS uses UDP port 4569 and binds all local addresses, but both of these can be configured. One setting you might enable for security is the delay reject setting. This causes Asterisk to delay sending authentication rejection messages by one second. This doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, but it can greatly reduce the speed at which attackers can try to guess passwords. Several jitter buffer settings can be set in the general section that affect the maximum size for the jitter buffer, when it should be automatically synchronized, and whether it's in use at all. The jitter buffer built into the EECS implementation of Asterisk is not enabled by default. If you do enable it, it's recommended not to change any of the other jitter buffer settings until you've tested the defaults and confirmed that they won't work for you. Other settings that can be updated here involve call encryption, EECS trunking options, and inbound registration timeouts. These options are well documented in the sample EECS configuration file. Below the general section of eeks.conf, you can add individual sections for each device or connection, just like in sip.conf. In each of these, you can set basic options like type, secret, host, and context. Plenty of additional options for codec control, caller ID settings, alternative authentication methods, and keep alives are also offered. At a simple level, you can get two Astra systems to connect via eeks with just the same few settings as for sip. Set type equals friend on both systems, set the secret to the same string on both systems, and set host equals to the IP address or host name of the other system. In order to demonstrate a call going over an EECS trunk, we have set up a simple lab. We have two asterisk systems with their host names set to asterisk dash left and asterisk dash right. There's an SSH terminal open to each system, and we're editing eeks.conf on each. The usernames have to match on each end, so we gave the sections the same name on both boxes, trunk-1. We also made sure the secrets match. For each box, we set host equals to the host name of the other box. We also set context equals internal underscore users, so we can reuse the dial plan context we've previously defined. Without this setting, calls would connect to the default context. You can see that both systems are configured with the same settings, with the only difference being that the host equals line is set to specify the host name of the opposite system. We'll save and exit eeks.conf on both systems, and then open extensions.conf to show a very simple dial plan we've written to send calls over the trunk. Because we used type equals friend, this eeks connection can send and receive calls in both directions. However, for the purpose of this example, we've only set the dial plan up to go in one direction. It is possible to reverse the dial plans and dial in the other direction. Everything would still work, but for now, we'll dial from the system on the left and have the call received by the system on the right. Here you see the internal underscore users context that we've previously configured in the Making Your First Call chapter. We've added extension 100 to specify the outbound dial. It has only one priority, that will dial the eeks resource named trunk-1. Because we are not passing any extension or context details, Asterisk will connect to the S extension in the configured context on the other system. We'll save the configuration and reload the dial plan on the left system now. On the right system, we'll now open extensions.conf you can see we have created extension S and given it two priorities. First, we have a simple playback of the Hello World audio file, and then we hang up the call. We'll now save this file and reload the dial plan on the asterisk console. 
We'll now dial extension 100 from our cell phone to initiate an EECS call from the first system to the second system. Hello, world. We can see on the console that the call connects. The call has been sent from the first system over the EECS trunk to the second system where it executed the S extension in the internal underscore users context, playing the audio prompt. The media was passed over the EEX trunk back to the first system and was played through the phone, which is how we heard it. The configuration used here isn't very full featured or secure and would not be used in a production system, but it has done well to illustrate how to send a call over an EEX trunk. Native transferring in EEX is similar to SIP's reinvite feature, but differs in one key way. Like with SIP, it is possible to optimize the communications path between two endpoints by configuring them to speak directly with each other instead of through one or more intermediaries. But unlike SIP, EECS can negotiate the signaling stream in addition to the media stream, all in a single transaction. Native transferring in EECS is simple to configure. Simply set the transfer option in EECS.conf to yes, no, or media only. The media only option behaves like SIP reinvites by directing just the media of the call, but not the signaling. Remember that if the media is transferred, recording, transcoding, and other operations that involve asterisk manipulating the media are not possible. If the signaling is transferred, asterisk sees the call as terminated from its perspective, so CDR won't accurately reflect how long the call was active. Eeks trunking is a powerful tool that can save bandwidth and increase call capacity when there are numerous simultaneous calls on an Eeks trunk. It works by packing the encoded media data for multiple calls into a single EEX frame. This results in fewer total packets sent, so there is less overhead consumed by IP and UDP headers. The more simultaneous EEX calls you have between two endpoints, the more valuable this feature is. It is trivial to implement this feature, just set trunk equals yes for the EEX endpoint that you want to be able to use it. Both ends of the trunk must have the setting enabled for it to work. You can tweak the behavior of EECS trunking using the trunk max size, trunk MTU, trunk freak, and trunk timestamp settings, but you shouldn't have to worry about these settings in most environments. View the sample eeks.conf configuration for a full description of each setting. At this point, you should have a basic understanding of EECS fundamentals and how to configure EECS endpoints in asterisk. In the next chapter, We'll return again to extensions.conf to learn several more crucial dial plan concepts in a chapter called Intermediate Dial Plan.